In downtown Milwaukee, there's an old hotel where the elite used to meet. Now this plush yet shabby monument to a bygone era has become a haven for the harried, a pad for the unpredictable, and a watering hole for the weary. Step inside and join us for another fun-filled episode of... Hotel Milwaukee. Hotel Milwaukee was an old-time radio variety show with musicians, sketch comedy, and poets. Hotel Milwaukee. It was taped in Milwaukee and aired on Wisconsin Public Radio. I got to be on Hotel Milwaukee. It must have been about the year 2000 because Boomer Girls had just come out. Hotel Milwaukee. I was giving the reading with Susan Keir. I think I read most of my fourth book, part of my fifth book. I tried it out on that show. Susan introduced me to Pam Jersey, the executive producer of Hotel Milwaukee. I'm sitting on Margaret Mitchell's grave, by the way. Pam, uh, man, she made a cultural document of the city at a certain time period. Uh, she was a, uh, she put together these concoctions, cultural concoctions mm -hmm. of uh, everything from opera, accordion bands, drama. Poetry is perfect for this medium. Karoom, kaboom me blown balloon-like into abandoned cars, silent prayers. Always too quickly. This old-time radio show doesn't have any, of course, other stimulus for the listener. So there's no imagery to get distracted by. It was on the radio. If they didn't have a camera, they uh, they just had voices. A woodpecker on my tree, a gorgeous woodpecker. I love radio, and, and they had a great feel for traditional radio. listener then has the opportunity to hear a poem almost in the way it was written, and that is of course one word at a time. Frequently Pam would have just little surprises, like one time the mayor was singing a love song to his wife. Pam invited me to read some of my Dolly Parton poems on the next show. I'm in front of the boar's nest from the Dukes of Hazard. It's a church now. We taped the show at the Northern Lights Theater at Potawatomi Casino in Milwaukee. Irene Bedard, who is in Smoke Signals, and also did the voice of Disney's Pocahontas, was also a guest that night. Yeah, I remember being invited to go to uh, see the taping of the Hotel Milwaukee episode with uh, Irene Bedard. And uh, Irene Bedard, I loved her in Smoke Signals. Uh, she was the voice of Pocahontas. Ladies and gentlemen, now performing in the Boom Boom Room is Irene Bedard at Denny. She's this absolutely beautiful woman and tremendously talented actress. I was so excited to, to see her. Now that that bit of name dropping is out of the way. <laughs> Dr. Powers, he, he reads the poem. I read three poems from what would become the Fowler Hotel Manuscript. After her parade, drive by into Dollywood, and ride to Dollywood. We go backstage to see Irene Bedard, and I'm getting introduced, and I might have been a little bit sloshy. Drive by into Dollywood was cut from the final broadcast. And then we went to uh, Los Tres Hermanos afterwards and drank a pitcher of margaritas. In fact, I think most of the time I've spent with Dr. Powers, all I've done is drink. This farm behind me, that's where the artist George O'Keefe was born. And this is a bear effigy mount, an old Indian effigy mount. It's supposed to be a bear. I don't see it. Here's a couple seconds of me on Hotel Milwaukee. After her parade, the lights are off. Everybody's gone home. 
Dolly walks alone through Dollywood. She listened to her heels. Down that driveway there is where Woody Guthrie wrote, This Land is Your Land. The wooden gristmill wheel creaks. You are the only one that I know that's wild and crazy about Dolly Parton. On her fingertips, the electricity in an eagle's fallen feather. Smell of the dead fires. Okay, so Stephen and I were office mates, and in Curtain 527, which the pilot of which we never wrote, we were going to have a TV show called Curtain 527 that was the, uh, the adventures of English grad students. Um, and Stephen came in one day with a new episode of Curtain 527, and it was Stephen gets sampled by Radiohead. <laughs> These are the players of comedy sports right here, and all of them are big Radiohead fans. And this guy right here is a big Dolly Parton fan. Well, I, I imagine if you said Dolly Parton poems, Hotel Milwaukee people would imagine right away they'd say Stephen Powers. Because is anybody else writing Dolly Parton poems like he does? I don't think so. And I think we all are a little bit like Dolly Parton. You know, I think that everybody has a little Dolly Parton in them, or would like to have a little of them in Dolly Parton. So, Mike, did I ever tell you about the time that Radiohead sampled one of my Dolly Parton poems? When, where, and why? No, I don't think you have. There you are. You, you get around. Oh. It was really cool. They were at Alpine Valley. What was that? All I heard was Alpine Valley. They did a show in 2003 at Alpine Valley and they used a recording of me on Hotel Milwaukee to introduce one of their songs. Yeah, why did they even put a poem with Dolly Parton in their concert? And you reading it, I... I don't know, I think it's fun. It seems like something they would, they would like. Something uh, that... Yeah, that was it. it seems like Tom York would be a Dolly Parton fan, I think. And so, it makes sense, oddly. The combination between Radiohead and Dolly Parton, which is kind of obvious. It's kind of odd. I think that's one of the great gifts of poetry. Once you put one in the world, you never know when it will come back or appear again. One of my students came to my office about six months after this concert and said, you know Radiohead? Radiohead's a pretty famous band. I still can't hear you. I have this bootleg CD of the concert at Alpine Valley, and there's a guy on there talking about Dolly and Dolly Parton, and I swear to you. Did they call you about it or anything to ask you if they could do that? Nope. Can you repeat that story? I still can't hear you. A student came to my office with the bootleg CD of the concert and said I was on it. How many times do I have to tell you? Why would Radiohead sample the Dolly Parton poem? How did they get a hold of it? I don't get it. We put the CD in my office computer, and sure enough, it was me from Hotel Milwaukee reading after her parade over the sound system at Alpine Valley just before Radiohead's second encore, which was their song, The National Anthem. After the parade, the lights are off. Everybody's gone home. Dolly walks alone to Dolly. This building behind me, by the way, was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. It's the only building he designed that stands in his hometown. It's in a shameful state of neglect, if you ask me. I ordered the bootleg CD on eBay. Which is kind of funny because I like telling people I bought myself on eBay. So you have an illegal recording of your own voice? Okay, you're you're not only in the world, you're you're in the world bootlegged. What's the number for nine one one? You're a bootlegger. Hotel Milwaukee. Should we listen to a few minutes of Hotel Milwaukee?
souls. I am always growing to love. Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to direct you to the Hotel Coffee Shop, where Stephen Powers has stepped to the stage and is about to read. After the parade, the lights are off. Everybody's gone home. Dollar walks alone through Dollarwood. She listened to her heels tap like whatever rats lightly on my bedroom door. The wooden grist mill wheel creaks Lumbers round and round. She stops, feels on her fingertips the electricity in an eagle's fallen feather. Smells the dead fires that have cooked glass, potatoes, sausages, and horseshoes all day. She enters her new Chasing Rainbows Museum, steps down the grand staircase, one hand on the railing, one hand over her heart. Her old dresses hang empty on display. Video screen toss shadows. A wall of magazine covers grins back at her. She closes her eyes, dreams of her coat of many colors, gliding arms outstretched in the wind over autumn leaves and wildflowers. Sings a few lines of wayfaring stranger, loud enough so she echoes and the sequins and rhinestones on all the dresses jingle like a bee curtain over my entryway back home. That was humorous lecturer and poet Stephen Powers. Bye, Stephen! Can you believe that story about Radiohead? Yeah, I didn't believe it either. That's kind of weird, huh? Yep.